So I don't know which lie of theirs to attack first. Because he's not really a businessman. This guy can't take an Excel sheet apart. Right. He did zero work. So Hunter thinks it's in effect. Yeah. He got off scot-free with the gun charge. Weiss was the absolute worst person on planet Earth to pick as the special counsel. Naomi Biden's Columbia tuition was paid for by Chicom Dirty Money. David Weiss's law school tuition paid for by bribe money. The Chicoms didn't start getting the money until Joey became a professor there. If Hunter didn't play the part of international businessman, I wouldn't have done this report. It's Hunter. It's all this is just Hunter yes. stuff. It's all Hunter. Joe Biden has nothing to do with it. He's just a crackhead. He had a drug problem, but now he's doing better. And Joe loves him. Yeah, smartest so, man he knows. Smartest man he knows, and he loves him. And how dare we make fun of him or post, you know, post these pictures and stuff like that because it was from a tough time in his life, and he's actually a good person. So what's the response to that? Yeah. So I don't know which lie of theirs to attack first. First of all, if Hunter was just a druggie and not a not, and he didn't play the part of international businessman, because he's not really a businessman. This guy can't take an Excel sheet apart. Right. He did zero work. If Hunter didn't play the part of international businessman, I wouldn't have done this report. We Our group wouldn't have been formed and we wouldn't have done the dossier. The reason why this matters is only because of who his daddy is. When Abby Lowell was deposing me, one thing that has transpired since our first talk was the mother of Hunter Biden's child retained me as a witness in their child support case. That That's was another right. thing. That's right. Uh, so I was in court with Hunter Biden. The reason why Hunter Biden went to his child support case was because of yours truly. They filed a motion to file sanctions against me and hold me in contempt for just being involved. That's what they wanted. And the judge said, okay, well, we're gonna have a hearing about this, but Hunter, you can't just do your lawyering through the mail. You actually gotta show up this time. So for the first time in three years of paternity litigation, Hunter Biden scooted down to, uh, to Independence County, Arkansas. And <laughs> I don't know where to start. For First of all, with, with that whole saga, the only reason, if this were just an f up son with no business experience, like for instance, Amy Carter. Jimmy Carter had a degenerate daughter named Amy who got kicked out of Brown. Now it wasn't officially kicked out, but they were, you know, they, they came to an agreement where Amy would not return for the next semester because she was smoking dope on Brown University campus. Guess what? There were like three articles about it and everybody has since forgotten about it. Nobody can even remember it. That is the distinction here. You have Amy Carter, just a normal girl who smoked dope at Brown. Nobody harassed Jimmy. You know why? Because Jimmy had nothing to do with it. Contrast that, that's the stake in the ground. On the other side of the stake is a global far violating conspiracy that is in half a dozen countries in the most despotic regimes that planet Earth can produce, where you have the son who is smoking crack every 15 minutes getting consulting contracts with corrupt foreign oligarchs in that regime who all have legal trouble and who want Hunter, the crack addict who's playing international businessman with the nice tie, to go lobby his daddy and his daddy's administration to get them off of whatever legal predicament they're in. The comparison between Amy and Carter and Hunter is not even close. He brought in millions of dollars from foreign entities and that violates the FARA? And because it violates the Foreign Agent Registration Act, it's pure money laundering. As far as transfers directly to Joe, so number one, we have established communications between Hunter and Joe about Hunter's businesses in every form imaginable. Voicemails, text messages, emails, everything. They refer to him in multiple aliases. That news is just tr trickling out. Right, and the, It was and all over our report. That's exactly right. You're, I've seen Marco Polo, the logo. I'm sure you guys have seen it on Fox. You've seen it all, all over the place, right? Where they're yes. actually pulling it and they're referencing your data. You were ahead of the curve on this, you know, long time ago you were doing a deep dive on it. But but it's really, I would imagine, just the tip of the iceberg in terms of what exists out there. I agree. And it's just what we just have one device. One device. And that was kind of my quite like, you know, foreign banks, foreign companies, foreign out like this is just his hard drive with a lot of the stuff that we have locally. One of the last pages in our report, Hunter will disagree with this. As stated on our website, Mass said, the mission of Marco Polo is to expose corruption and blackmail to drive an American renaissance. Accordingly, the Biden laptop was right for a thorough exposition. In fact, publishing material from the Biden laptop lessens any potential blackmailer's power as the threat of disclosure is no longer in their arsenal. So by airing all of this stuff, we're actually <laughs> taking ammunition away from people who could hold it over the Biden's head. Mm -hmm. Now, 
Conversely, there is stuff out there not from his laptop that is probably equally or more damaging right. that they are probably still threatening them with. I always say Marco Polo has more knowledge of the Bidens than anybody in the Western world. I believe that. But you know who has more knowledge than us? The Chai Coms. Yeah. The Chai Coms dossier <laughs> is more than 644 words. Some people are asking, where do we go to get this? Go to MarcoPoloUSA.org to read the full version for free. Read and look up the full version online before you purchase the physical copy so you know exactly what you're getting. If I'm you sitting on the other side of the table, I want to do that. But going back to your original question, Joe is the chairman. Hunter called him the chairman. The, the business model is not easy, but simple. It's simple in theory, but in practice, it's, it's hard to... Uh, something can both be simple and not easy. Sure. The steps are easy to understand, but hard to effectuate and to put into play. For a country, for example, like in the case of Romania, which the Congress was obsessed with for a couple of weeks. In Romania, the task was to get a foreign oligarch, namely Gabriel Popovicu, out of a jam. He was facing a seven-year seven year prison sentence. So what did he do? He hired Hunter Biden and some attorneys at Boyce Schiller Flexner, one of the far left, absolutely evil organs of American legal system, to lobby the U.S. government, namely the sitting U.S. ambassador to Romania, Hans Klim. And their goal was for the U.S. government to strong arm the Romanians. So this isn't hypothetical. When I say, oh, we have emails. No, 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 no. Go to BidenLaptopEmails.com, type in the word Popovicu, P-O-P-O, V-I-C-I-U. Then you'll see Hunter talking to Michael Gottlieb, who, by the way, talking about elections, Michael Gottlieb was the attorney for Seth Rich's brother in yes. their defamation case, Aaron Rich, and Michael Gottlieb is the attorney for Ruby Freeman. You think Ruby Freeman shelling out $1,200 an hour for Michael Gottlieb? No. Right. Those are left-wing activists paying the attorney's fees for Ruby Freeman. So what does this mean? This means that Hunter was business partners and committed FAR violations with Ruby Freeman's attorney. Hilariously. The, the, what I'm trying to say is these few actors are almost at every single nexus of big time corruption. Michael Gottlieb in the past half decade, and I challenge him to sue me, Michael Gottlieb in the past decade, before, after he was an Obama White House counsel official, has been at every single corrupt nexus in American political life. Everything from Seth Rich's death, which is the start of the Russia hoax, to Hunter Biden's far violating regime. So why do I bring up this email with Michael Gottlieb and Hunter? They are talking about where they're meeting Hans Klim. The subject of the email regarding meet with Hans Klim. Where are we meeting? Hunter. Restaurant called Lapis on Columbia Road. Uh, and then he said, see you there. So you have the sitting U.S. ambassador to Romania meeting with people who are paid. By the way, Hunter, $230,000 at least went to him alone for the Romania deal. So that this involves a U.S. ambassador too? Yes, sitting U.S. ambassador Hans Klim. So what people are going to get from this report, you know, go online and read it for free, is you can follow each and every URL in these footnotes and get more color. So when I say Gottlieb facilitated a dinner with Hunter and Clem in D.C. to propagandize the U.S. ambassador about the misdeeds of the Romanian prosecutor, Laura Covesi. Hunter's almost using other people like an ambassador. Yes. Rather than his dad. Yes, in some cases. In some cases, Joey's directly involved, like in the case of getting Shokin fired. Right. If he's not right. fired, you're not getting the money. Or it's, the other text message where Hunter's sitting right next to him, hey, my dad is yes. sitting here. If you don't get yes. us paid, there's big problems for you. Yes. It's contextualized based upon how much of the lemon he needs to squeeze. Meaning if he can get it done Got it. without invoking Joe, he'll get it done without invoking Joe, i.e. Hans Klim. But if it takes Joey, he's right there. And again, these are not, this is not spec speculation. you got to go to the emails, read these email exchanges. It, it, the human comedy has never been richer than what it is right now. This not only involves Hunter, Gabriel Popovicu, the son of Boys, the founder, mm -hmm. Chris Boys, his son, uh, and Michael Gottlieb. This also involves Louis Free, the corrupt, one-eyed former head of the U of I, yeah. or the FBI. You know why uh, Louis Free has one eye, by the way? We're one of the mm -hmm. few groups to talk about this. Louis Free was drunk as a skunk in the broad daylight in a northeastern state. I believe it was Vermont or New Hampshire, at 2 p.m. and runs right into a tree. He almost dies because of blood loss. He has to get airlifted out of the forest. And guess who the first person to show up at his hospital bedside was? James freaking Comey. Whoa. So, so, and the reason why he has one eye is because there were complications from that car wreck 
that made him only have one eye. So now he looks like even more of a gremlin. And this is but, an, this is an ex FBI agent or no, 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 former chief. Louis Free was a Southern District of New York judge and the former head of the FBI, working hand in glove with Hunter. Now there's been a lot of speculation about Louis Free being one eyed, and I know you mentioned Gal Luft in the topics mm -hmm. to discuss. We don't have proof that it was Louis Free, but all available evidence points to him. Yeah. Now Luft mentioned that, right? The one eyed guy. He did mention yeah. the one eyed that yeah. Hunter and it, and it fits perfectly with their MO. Part of what Gabriel Popovichu was paying for, according to Luff, is inside intel about his case and about what the FBI is doing behind the scenes to to lobby Popovichu. I got into an argument with a, a shithead reporter at the New York Times called Ken Vogel, who said they weren't violating the FARA and the Romanian deal. And all I did was literally link the email from our email site. This is a direct FARA violation because he said to me they weren't lobbying U.S. officials, meaning to get a FARA violation. If Hunter were lobbying just Romanian officials about mm -hmm. Gabriel Popovichu, it wouldn't have been a felony. But it was because he was lobbying U.S. officials to take certain actions. That's why it was a FARA violation. Of course, Vogel didn't respond. Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> it, th these people are horrible human beings. Well, and I feel like nothing's going to satisfy them. Yes. You, you can give them every single thing, a whole laptop, 600 pages plus. You Good can jobs. send them the emails, everything, and they're just going to say... Yeah. So, I mean, you, you, they want us to be in the room when Hunter solicits the prosecutor, right. basically. So I can show you the text message. I can show you the Uber receipt. I can show you the Venmo transaction. I can show you the SAR. And they're saying, there's there's no evidence here. It's We not only have primary source evidence, we have multiple... Let's put it this way. When you go through on your show the affidavit, it's that these feds write for probable cause to arrest a January 6th trespasser. Mm -hmm. Our dossier is 20 times more detailed. All they have is a couple of screenshots. We have emails at the contemporaneous time proving the conspiracy. It's like juries in every judicial district across the nation have convicted and imprisoned people for less than this stuff. Less. Right. Emails don't lie. We can prove the validity based on the DKIM and other metadata. We can prove the validity of these emails. There's nothing forged about them. That's why not only do, and this is something that even WikiLeaks didn't do, and I'm proud of this, and that's, that's why I'm, I'm not tooting my horn. I'm tooting, I'm tooting Brian's horn who created the site. BidenLaptopEmails.com allows individual users, you all who are watching this, to download the emails themselves. So let's say you don't like Apple Mail. You can open them in Thunderbird. You can open them in Outlook. You can open the emails in whatever email client you feel comfortable with and look at the properties and the metadata in the email. I'm not hiding anything. Mm -hmm. And that's what we love most. You know what I love more than anything is going on Twitter, searching our email site in the search bar and finding things that we didn't find. Now, I'll be sad if they find a crime that we didn't find because that was my whole goal of going through all 128,000. Right. Meaning I couldn't follow every single rabbit trail if on the surface it didn't denote criminality. But there's also more rabbit trails to be found. So I wanted to ask you about like your, so how many crimes did you assemble? Four, yeah, 459 violations of state and federal laws and regs. So not every one of them is a felony and not, so there are a couple of misdemeanors and not every one of them is a statute violation like this clear cut fire violation. A couple of them are regulations. Uh, so that's why we say 459 violations of state and federal laws. For example, in the Indian bond fraud scheme, we got on 17 CFR 240, which is a securities regulation. Let's put it this way, that's a floor. If we had subpoenas, and we were doing a real LEO investigation, we could probably get over a thousand. But just on open source intelligence with PIs, that's what we use basically to create this report is private investigators, which any law office would do sure. with this kind of material, uh, there's 459. So what was your reaction when the DOJ was gonna have him plead guilty to one? Well, we wrote to the judge. I got Rudy Giuliani and Robert Costello to sign on to a letter that we drafted uh, to Judge Noriega. And Judge Noriega did the right thing. She asked like three questions. It wasn't even a hard Socratic method yeah. and they just wilted. And the bottom line up front in that is that Chris Clark wanted immunity. And for some reason, you know why I Chris think- Chris Clark, the lawyer wanted Chris immunity. Chris Clark, the, the lawyer who has since quit. Right. Only Abby Lowell is now the guy, the guy who wants me in prison. Abby Lowell is his chief counsel now. Chris Clark wanted immunity. Noriega just asked in open court 
Are you under the understand? Have you have any promises been made to right. you? Which she's forced to ask. Well, it's not forced, but the guidelines, the criminal rules of civil procedure, suggest that she asks that to any defendant. And Hunter said, "Yes, there is a promise yeah. <laughs> that they will not prosecute me for anything in the statement of facts." What screwed this whole thing up was they wanted to split the baby Solomon style. Instead of just putting everything in the plea agreement, instead of just pleading guilty, they wanted to have this side diversion agreement yep. with the gun charge. Yep. That is what screwed it all up. If they just would have done the corruption in broad daylight and said, you know what, Hunter's getting off scot-free because his daddy is the chief executive, right. she would have signed it. But because there was a diversion agreement, by the way, we're of the opinion that the diversion agreement is not in effect because there was a line for the signature of the probation officer, Margaret Bray. By the way, the night of, the only time Marco Polo has been quick on a transcript is that time. And I read that I, we, on the thing. We you were guys so had that so we fast, We paid two ninety for that because we got it the day of. Yeah. And it, guess what? That woman, uh, the probation officer, I emailed her that night looking for the booking photo mm -hmm. because I wanted the booking photo on Hunter before they got one of Trump. Right. And she won't give it to me because I don't even think they booked him. I don't even think Hunter has a mugshot. I don't. I think you're right. I don't think there is one. Because they, they should have sent it to me. Federal law is a little bit different than each municipality, but there's a presumption of access for booking photos for federal defendants in some districts, especially District of Delaware. So Margaret Bray didn't get back to me. She's the probation officer. But back to that line on the diversion agreement, that isn't signed. So Hunter thinks it's in effect. Yeah. He got off scot-free with the gun charge. And what Hunter's attorneys are now arguing is that they have two these two misdemeanor tax charges that were let, that were dismissed and that they're either going to bring him in the C Central District of California or the District of D.C. now that he's the special counsel. And Weiss was the absolute worst person on planet Earth to pick as the special counsel. I couldn't agree with you more on that. Weiss, of course, was the person behind the botched plea deal, and he's getting criticized left and right. Do you know anything about him and... Bo, I know that they work together. They work together. We have we have no paper in the laptop linking them. The, that was one of the first things we did when he got it. Is search everything for wife you can. Yeah. In fact, we looked. Ev we still have only found one photo of his wife online. It was a law book or law school yearbook. And then it, there was a story that went mini viral last a couple. You know, last. <laughs> There's a hater on here that says zero facts. So um, the they're, yeah, they're out there, zero right? yeah. zero facts is all these emails. Yeah. But we a story went viral regarding David Weiss's father, who was a convicted bribe taker at the IRS. He was a ta he was a corrupt tax collector, Meyer Weiss, at the University of Pennsylvania. And we just put that out there because nobody's talking about it. You have a literal crime family trying to prosecute another crime family in Delaware. David Weiss is an institution in Delaware, knows everyone. Why the hell he would be picked for this is beyond me, other than to corrupt. But you know what? Even worse than Weiss, we're zeroed in on this woman named Leslie Wolf. We talked about that in our report. In fact, here's Leslie Wolf. She's a beautiful woman, being facetious. So this is Leslie Wolf, Leslie Paula Frieder Wolf, PA bar number 202068. So the, again, this is the subpoena that we got. Or that, that was posted online by the shop owner, but there's another subpoena that we got via the SAR, right? That had Leslie, that bore Leslie Wolf's name. And if so you, if you have not seen this, you have to get it. Just <laughs> Go over to Marco Polo USA. He's flipping through it right now. It's incredible. Yeah. So Leslie Wolf, for everybody at home who's not who's not followed the case, she was the day-to-day -day chief. She was the one signing the grand jury subpoenas and conducting the investigation. Page numbers. Thank you, Greg Wilson. This is on page 38. So Leslie Wolf didn't allow the IRS investigators to ask about the big guy. Didn't allow people. Didn't allow the investigators to interview Hunter's kids. Mm -hmm who received payments from ChaiCom money through their father, absolutely verified because we have the wire tr transfer from the ChaiComs, and then we have him paying uh, Naomi Biden's Columbia tuition. <laughs> Naomi Biden, I, I love to pick on her, not pick on her, but just expose the facts. Naomi Biden's Columbia tuition was paid for by ChaiCom dirty money. It's absolutely verified. David Weiss's law school tuition paid for by bribe money, absolute bribe money. It's, it is in the statement of facts when Meyer appealed it to the U.S. US tax court. They went through the statement of facts or the, or the finding of facts. The first couple of sentences, it's like Meyer paid for his children's educational funds with the bribe money. How is that? That story did go viral. I am proud of that because we utilized Ancestry.com and Newspapers.com and a volunteer on our team, Linda, did phenomenal work on that. Uh, that took us weeks to figure out. I mean, who is this guy? David Weiss, his daddy was in the clink. So page 38 goes into Leslie Wolf, but also important to Leslie Wolf is her husband. Her husband taught at the very school that Joey taught at. Joey Biden, 
the presidential practice professor, the Ben Franklin presidential practice professor at UPenn taking a million in Chicom cash from UPenn was colleagues with, let, this is page 39, Dr. Daniel Herman Wolf is a professor at Penn at the same time Joey was taking huge amounts of Chicom cash and she didn't recuse herself. So not only did they violate the recusal regulation, Penn at the time of Joe's employment stated or stated that they didn't receive a foreign donation over $250,000 threshold. That is 20 USC 1011 FE. So every time you get a foreign donation above $250,000, all you have to do, you, can, you don't have to give it back, you just have to declare where it came from. Mm -hmm. That's all you got to do. You can't allow anonymity. So again, the National Legal and Policy Center, Paul Kaminar, did a good report on this in October of 2020. I got to give him credit because we cite his report here because it goes into how Betsy DeVos and all of the Trump people, and again, I was a Trump staffer, didn't do anything with these clear federal violations. You look at this, guess what? The Chicoms didn't start getting the money until Joey became a professor there. So it, the timing's perfect. Like in a criminal indictment, Joey enters professorship at Penn. Tricom cash starts flowing. It's amazing. <laughs>